Shall we start now? Yes, I think we yes, can sir. start. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. Hey, everyone. Good morning to one and all. I am Suprabha. Department of Applied Science and Humanities of Universal Engineering College, Valiwata, invites you to the five-day faculty development program on discrete mathematics, graph theory, and its applications. Thank you all for joining us. Department of Applied Science and Humanities is devoted to foster the fundamental principles and understanding of science that are capable of enhancing the human experience. Strong high-rise building cannot be built up on a weak foundation, which signifies the importance of the Department of Applied Science and Humanities. Today, with the Department of Applied Science and Humanities, in association with IQAC, probably presenting our faculty development program. Let's start with a welcome speech. So I am hand overing to our respected coordinator, uh, Associate Professor Denya Miss. Ma'am, welcome. Good morning to all. I am Dhanya from Universal Engineering College. Respected Vice Chairman, P.K. Zalin Sir, Dr. Joske Jacob, our Chief Guest, Sister Dr. K. Jarmina, all faculty of Universal Engineering College and dear participants. It gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all to the Faculty Development Program on Discrete Mathematics, Graph Theory and its Applications. Today we are commencing our FTP and I would like to inform you that I am one of the coordinator of this FTP along with Mr. Rahul Devi, Department of Applied Sciences and Humanities. The idea of this FTP came from a casual talk among faculty and HOD and the matter was informed to the principal and vice chairman. They gave us full support and freedom to go forward. But we never expect this to be a grand success as we have a total of 958 demonstrations all over India and also from outside India. We are really surprised to have such a great response. And about our FTP, it has been organized with lectures of eminent personalities. The main aim is to impart knowledge in mathematics to the teachers and to the students. It gives an insight into how and where it can be used. And importance of our subject is discrete mathematics. The study of finite mathematical system is a hybrid subject which is very helpful in studying and describing objects and problems in all branches of computer science such as computer algorithm, programming languages, cryptography, automata theorem and software development. And about graph theory, it is ultimately the study of relationships which has a wide range of applications in diverse fields such as web designing, study of molecules, construction of bonds in chemistry, study of atoms and also in sociology. We are sure this FTP will provide not only the essential knowledge, but also a great opportunity to share experiences among each other. Without much delay, I'm coming, coming to my job of welcoming you all to this FTP. With immense respect, I first I welcome our Vice Chairman, P.K. Zalin sir, who has extended his cooperation and guidance to organize this FTP. Welcome, sir. Next, I warmly welcome our chief guest, Thank you. Mr. Dr. K. Jarmina, HOD, Associate Professor, Department of Mathematics, Central University, Kasargod. She is one of the resource person of this FDP, and it's our luck to get such an eminent personality who is well versed in the subject graph theory. Welcome, ma'am. Next, I welcome our principal, Dr. Joske Jacob, who gives us more support to faculty for the academics. Welcome, Joe, sir. Thank you. Next, I welcome the IQC Director and HOD of Department of Applied Sciences and Humanities, Dr. K.K. Narayanan, sir. He is the man behind this FTP, whose support always encouraged us. Welcome, Narayanan, sir. <coughs> also, I welcome the other resource persons of this FTP. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Lisa Matthew from Amaljodi College of Engineering, Dr. Ramkumar P.B. from Dajigiri College of Engineering, Dr. Sudev Naduvar from Christ University, Bangalore. Dr. Zima Vargis from Government Engineering College, Trishu. Finally, I welcome all faculty of Universal Engineering College and all my dear participants here for the FTP. I hope this FTP will bring all participants into a deeper understanding and friendship with each other. Once again, on behalf of Universal Engineering College, I warmly welcomes you all to this FTP. Thank you. Thank, 
thank you denya miss next the presidential speech mr pk salim sir who work in the major oil and gas industry such as Aramco Kuwait Oil Company, Atmoc and Qatar Petroleum since 1983. He is a member of International Institute of Risk and Safety Management of UK. I welcome Mr. P.K. Salim, Vice Chairman of Universal Engineering College for the Presidential Address. So I am hand overing to Salim sir. Sir, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, we are starting the event. Are we starting the event? Yeah. So, it is presidential address, sir. Your address. Okay. Dear principal, Dr. Joske Dekta, Dr. Narayan, and Chodi of Applied Science and Humanities Department, UEC, distinguished guests, faculties, staff, other delegates representing outstanding colleges and universities and all other participants. Good morning and thank you all for joining with us today. Your being here this morning brings honor to me and our institution as well. Today we are commencing a five-day degree which will be inaugurated by our distinguished guest, Dr. K. A. Germina. Chodi and Associate Professor of the Central University, Kasserpur. This Friday FTP is organized by the Department of Applied Sciences and Humanities of the Universal Engineering College. My sincere thanks to all fantastic inauguration and FTP organization team and to all those at the college who coordinated with us to organize this event. I would like to add a special word of thanks to the speakers of FDP, that is Dr. K.J. K. Germina, HOD and Associate Professor of Central University Council Board, Dr. Lisa Matthew, HOD, Professor of Amidodi College of Engineering, Dr. Dr. Ram Kumar, PB, HOD, Associate Professor, Kathiri College of Engineering, Akhenad. Dr. Sudev, Associate Professor, Christ University, Bangalore. Dr. Seema Walgis, Associate Professor, Government Engineering College, and all other personalities behind this FDP, especially our honorable principal, Dr. K, Dr. Josh K. Jacob, Dr. Narayan, HOD of Applied Science of and Humanities, Humanities Department, UEC, our Assistant Administrator, Mr. Shafi, and all those who are behind this event. Once again, thank you all for joining us today and all the best. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. An ordinary professional who fulfills all the prerequisites of the work post and who elevated the spirit of the college at all leads through his accessibility to committed staff and students. With immense respect, I am hand overing to our respected principal, Dr. Jose K. Jacob, for his valuable words. Sir, please. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Parva. Thank you, sir. Uh, a warm good morning to all. Uh, respected Chief Guest, uh, Sister Dr. K. Jermina, other distinguished uh, persons in this uh, platform, my dear colleagues and all participants. I am very happy here today because our Department of uh, Applied Science and Humanities is organizing five days uh, faculty development program in uh, discrete mathematics. I'm sure that this will be become a platform for the knowledge transfer. So the, as we know, knowledge, when knowledge is transferred, so it will multiply. And I hope this will give an insight to many people. And I'm surprised that the total number of participants is 958. I also express my sincere thanks to all resource person who are associated with this development program. On behalf of UNOS Engineering College, I uh, express our, my sincere thanks to 
all the resource person for your valuable time with us and i wish all success to this program may god almighty bless you all thank you thank you very much thank you joseph next is our inaugural session for that i invite our respected guest sister dr jermina dr jermina is presently working as associate professor in mathematics department in central university of kerala kasaragod so ma'am uh, please few, uh, say a few words for us so i am hand overing to dr jermina Uh, very good morning to all uh, most respected vice chairman of the universal engineering college and president of this function mr salim pk dr jos k jacob the principal of this college ms dhanya cg and mr rakul revi the coordinators of this faculty development program iqc director dr kk narayan all other dignitaries most dearest faculty members and research scholars who are part of this program a very good morning to all i should first congratulate the management principal and coordinators and other faculty members of universal engineering college and of course the faculty members and scholars participating on this online fg program is indeed a gesture of your love towards your profession as a faculty in any ft program the three main objectives as we all know are the teaching learning aspects namely unlearning the learned things for better perspectives of the students thinking beyond the role of a teacher considering all domains of learning of students and accepting the new roles by a teacher at all the times this fdp is on discrete mathematics graph theory and its applications actually graph theory is just a part of discrete mathematics it is not a separate thing from discrete mathematics it included in discrete mathematics discrete mathematics is a study of mathematical structures that can assume only distinct separated values rather than continuous the objects studied in discrete mathematics such as integers graphs and statements in logic do not vary smoothly but have distinct separated values as we all know research in discrete mathematics increased in a better half in the later half of the 20th century partly due to the development of digital computers which operate in discrete and store data in discrete bits concepts and notations from discrete mathematics are useful in studying and describing objects and problems in branches of computer science such as computer algorithms programming languages cryptography automated theorem proving and software development as we always say mathematicians always say conversely computer implementations are significant in applying ideas from discrete mathematics to real world problems such as in operations research etc the study of how discrete objects combine with one another and the probabilities of various outcomes is known as actually combinatorics Discrete mathematics provide a common forum for significant research in many areas of discrete mathematics and combinatorics. Among the fields covered by discrete mathematics are graph and hypergraph theory, network theory, enumeration, coding theory, block design, theory of partially ordered sets, set theory, metroid theory, algebraic combinatorics. polyhedral combinatorial and discrete geometry matrices and discrete probability theory two important topics of discrete mathematics like as combinatorics and graph theory are closely related to major thrust areas of current research in discrete mathematics 
with the tremendous potential for applications in various fields such as computer science, sociology, psychology, chemistry, physics, economics, and several other real life problems. Hence, with immense happiness, I declare this faculty development program inaugurated and I wish all the best to all the participants. Once again, I congratulate the coordinators of this program and thank you all for giving me an opportunity to be part of this program. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your valuable words. Next, I invite Dr. KK Narayanan, sir, our HOD, Department of Applied Science and Humanities, for a few words. Sir, please. Thank you, Suprabha. Respected Vice Chairman, Mr. P.K. Selim, Respected Principal, Dr. Joske Jacob, our Chief Guest of the day, Sister Dr. Germina, other distinguished speakers of the program, and dear participants and colleagues, a very good morning to all of you. Today, I am very happy and to a certain extent so proud to be a part of the Applied Science and Humanities Department of Universal Engineering College. Because just a few days back, we completed one five-day national level webinar series on recent trends in science, technology, and social economy. And immediately after that, we are arriving at the launching ceremony of the five-day FDP program on discrete mathematics, graph theory, and its applications. The relevance, importance, and its impact are very clearly explained by our uh, wel uh, welcome speaker, Kenya, as well as our distinguished guest, Sister Germina. My appreciations and the best wishes to this program today. And let us make this program a grand success. And moreover, I am happy that today is an accidental coincidence for in order to start any program, the, according to our Malayalam calendar, the first day of the month is a good, supposed to be a good day for starting all these things. Luckily, this is the New Year day of Malayalam calendar. So happy New Year to all Malayalis who are participating in this and moreover, in order to begin with the mathematics, this day is also a very auspicious day in the language of mathematics, I should say like that, because today is the birthday of Pierre de Ferma, a French mathematician, and all mathematicians may be knowing the Fermat's theorems and the Fermat's last theorem. 17th August 1601, he was born. So by all means, and taking into account everything, I think this is a good start. And I wish every success and all the best to this new venture. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Next, I welcome Mr. Rahul Revi, Assistant Professor in Mathematics, for the vote of thanks. Sir, please. Good morning, all. I am Rahul Revi one of the coordinator of FDP, our FDP discrete mathematics and graph theory, and its application is a five-day five -day program organized by the Department of Applied Sciences and Humanities in association with the IQAC. All the importance of this FDP was already mentioned here, so I am not going to for an, another detail of explanation. Discrete mathematics and graph theory are the main two branches of mathematics, which gives any, many opportunities in research area. This FDP which, uh, will help in the researchers and students in all branches of, especially from the computer science department. Discrete mathematics is the backbone of the backbone, uh, backbone of the computer science. Now I would like to express our sincere thanks to Sister Dr. Germina K. A., HOD, Associate Professor, School of Physical Science, Central University, Kasargod, for an inaugural speech. Today is the first session will be handled by Sister Germina. Next, I would like to 
I would like to sincere uh, thanks to Mr. Salim Piki for Salim Piki, the Vice Chairman of the Universal Engineering College, for the giving all the support from the management side. Our principal, Dr. Jos K. Jacob, sir, the heartfelt thanks to you for in infinite support and valuable advice. Without you, the FTP will not happen. Next to the backbone of uh, ASS department and IQAC, Dr. K. K. Narayanan, IQAC Director and HUD. Sir, your guidelines and help in the lot in the lot in this program from the beginning till now. Thank you so much, sir. Next, the working hand behind this FTP, the program coordinator, Ms. Danya CG, and assistant professor A. Sandich, and all, all other faculties in executive committee. I express many sincere gratitude, gratitude to all of you over uh, endless effort. Once again, I express the thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul, sir. Now it's time to start our class. Today our topic is labeling and its application in graph theory, which is presented by Sister Dr. K. A. Germina, HOD, Department of Mathematics, Central University, Kasarpur. She is presently working as Associate Professor in Mathematics Department, Central University of Kerala, Kasarpur. She has about 20 years of teaching experience. She received her PhD degree from MS University, Tirunal Valley, in 1996 on discrete mathematics. The title of thesis is Studies on Graph Theory, Graceful, Harmonious, Strongly Graceful and Arithmetic Graphs. She has won 70 research articles in referred journals and edited seven volumes of proceedings and technical reports. She supervised 17 research students age MPhil and 45 MSc students. She has attended 27 seminars and conferences. For your kind attention, if you have any doubts during the presentation, please type them into the question box in your Zoom control panel, or you have the option of raise hand in control panel for asking your doubts. Also, I remind that we will have the time for question at the end. Now, it's time to start. Our guests will deliver the presentations. Ma'am, I am hand over to you. Welcome, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I think I will share the screen and then start it. Okay, ma'am. Hope it is. Hope you can see my screen. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, I will start. Uh, my topic is on labeling and its applications in graph theory. I have. Uh, I was thinking to take it in three sessions, like number valuations and then set valuations and some of the applications, and some open problems. Also, we will discuss. So uh, let us go to the origin of graph labeling problems first. Graph labeling problems has, be, has become famous because of some conjectures. The first conjecture is due to Ringel. The complete graph k 2 n plus 1 can be decomposed into 2 n plus 1 subgraphs, which are all isomorphic to a given tree T with n edges. This is a conjecture which is posed in 1963 by Ringel. And Kortzing has conjectured that if T is a tree on N edges, then the complete graph K2N plus 1 can be cyclically decomposed into 2N plus 1 copies of any tree with N edges. This is such a
an example of K5, complete graph on five vertices, which is being cyclically decomposed into P3s. This is five. So five times P3, you can see this with a different color. This is one P3, this is one P3, this is one P3, and this yellow color is again a P3. So there are five P3s combination of which will give you K5. So this is just an explanation of the conjecture which is being posed by them. So combining these two conjectures, Rosa established a connection between the graph valuations, which is now well known, Ringel's conjecture. Rosa brought to the notice of Korsing's suggestion that gracefulness of tree ascertain a cyclic decomposition of K2n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 copies of T. Hence, he established ringel korsing conjecture as this is a famous conjecture which is due to Rosa. If T is a graceful tree on N edges, then the complete graph K2n plus 1 can be cyclically decomposed into 2n plus 1 copies of any tree with N edges. So the famous conjecture remains as unsolved now. That is, if you can prove that every tree is graceful, we will come back, come, come to the definition of gracefulness and all soon. If you can prove that T is graceful, then in effect, you have settled these conjectures also. You can, it, so there is a connection like that. So now let us go back to the graph labeling. What do you mean by graph labeling problems in general? A graph labeling is an assignment of integers to the vertices or edges, or both edges and vertices, subject to certain conditions. These conditions decide different kinds of labelings of graphs. The latest updates of various graph labeling techniques Anyone can go for Galleon survey, which is a very every year he updates it. So you can you can have the different results and different variations of labelings, everything in this survey of Galleon with respect to graph labeling. So let us first go to the definition of what do we mean by a graceful labeling or a graceful graph. This is of course due to Rosa. A graph is known as graceful when its vertices are labeled from 0 to the cardinality of E. That is, if you are considering a PQ graph with P number of vertices and Q number of edges, you are allowed to give the labeling on the vertices from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., Q in a 1, 1 manner to the vertices of the graph. And this labeling induces an edge labeling on the edges and it should be consecutive from 1 to 3 etc up to q for any edge e the label of e is the positive difference the induced edge label should be the positive difference between the two vertices incident with e that is if e is an incident vertices labeled i and j then e will be labeled as the absolute difference of i minus j and if you see that such a function exists, that is, if you can give the labeling from the set 0 to Q in a 1-1 one -one manner to the vertices, such that the induced edge values receive the values from 1 to etc. Q, then we say that labeling is a graceful labeling. And we call such a graph a graceful graph. So this is an example of a graceful graph. That is, see, I have a K4 here. I give the labeling, see, you know that there are six edges for K4. So I give the labeling 0, 1, 4, 6. Take the absolute difference. Let us start from the beginning. This is 1, and this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, and this is 6. So you get on the edges 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is another example of a graceful graph. And this Peterson graph is another example of a graceful graph. However, 
this gracefulness is not a common thing in the sense that not all graphs are graceful so in his original paper itself rofsa proved that all eulerian graphs with a size equivalent to 1 or 2 mod 4 are not graceful so this this there are such some graphs which is not graceful so he called such graphs as ungraceful graphs so this non existence of gracefulness why it it is so why do we argue that there are classes of graphs which do not admit graceful labeling so rosa identified three basic reasons for why a graph g fails to be graceful g has too many vertices and not enough edges g has too many edges g has wrong parity so as an example of this g has wrong parity he gave the uh, theorem as an eulerian graph with cardinality of the edge set that is q is congruent to 1 or 2 mod 4 is not graceful so let us look at some of the results which is being established that is many people have attempted to prove see to us all aim was to prove that all trees are graceful so we cannot do we, uh, people could not establish that till it is an open problem it remains as a conjecture that all trees are graceful so people try to prove which classes of graphs that are graceful so column proved that the complete graph kn is not graceful for n greater than or equal to 5 or in other words complete graph is graceful if and only if that n is the number of vertices is less than or equal to 4 and another result is that all wheels are graceful crowns are graceful any cycle with a fixed number of pendant edges attached to each vertice are graceful and the graceful labeling of subdivision of ladders are being studied by kadirishan and sedhuraman and selvaraj discussed gracefulness of arbitrary super subdivisions of cycles web graphs has been studied vaidya and their group have discussed gracefulness of union of two path graphs and grid graphs and complete bipartite graph also in literature you can see the discussion on gracefulness of some classes of disconnected graphs also so to our interest because of the conjecture that all trees are graceful what are those trees that are proved to be graceful let us have a look at it in the literature among all the trees known to be graceful are caterpillars path olive trees hope you know what is a caterpillar if you delete the pendant edges you will get a path that is what we mean by a caterpillar olive tree means a tree a collection of i paths joined in a vertex where i have where the path i has length i that is what is called an olive tree it is proved to be graceful graceful numbering in the context of some special classes of spanning trees explored by kahit and kahit also bermond constructed that lobsters are graceful lobsters means if you delete the pendant edges you get a caterpillar but this itself this conjecture itself stand open and it is not being proved that any general lobsters whether they are graceful or not some particular classes of lobsters are uh, proved to be graceful that is all lobsters with the perfect matchings are proved to be graceful using some adjacency matrix property various classes of lobsters are proved to be graceful by ghosh and their team shekhar and ramachandran has discussed graceful labeling of arbitrary subdivision of disconnected graphs these are some of the uh, classes of graphs that have been uh, proved to be graceful still many of the 
conjectures and open problems that are being posed in the first paper itself is unsettled. One such big problem is that, okay, if you cannot give a graceful labeling by assigning the numbers from one to etc. Q to the vertices, what is that optimum value that you want to have on the vertex so that you can make it all the so that the edges receive the consecutive numbers from one to q that's itself is a very big problem still open so optimization also comes along with this graceful graphs so uh, so people could not prove this uh, gracefulness directly so people thought of uh, defining uh, various other uh, kind of or particular classes of graceful one such important because of its application one such important concept of graceful graph is odd graceful which is introduced by jnana jodi which is defined as a graph g with q edges is odd graceful if there is an injection f from vertex z to 0, 1, 2, etc., 2, q, minus 1, such that when each edge xy is assigned to the label, the absolute difference of f of x minus f of y, the resulting set of edge label is 1, 3, etc., 2, q, minus 1. That is all odd numbers from 1 to 2, q, minus 1. But you allow all the numbers from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., 2, q, minus 1 to the vertex set. So you have more uh, numbers to be assigned to the vertices, but you need to get only the odd numbers on the edges. This is important because of its application that we will discuss later. This is an odd graceful cycle, example of an odd cycle. And I am sure that you must be knowing what is alpha labeling, beta labeling, and all. They are simultaneously along with this gracefulness. Those things also has been developed. Beta evaluation is nothing but it is same as graceful labeling. Alpha graceful graph, alpha evaluation means you will, it is a graceful graph plus the graph can be bipartite. And can, uh, will have a bipartite way of giving the evaluation. You can find a particular value in between. One, one, one such bipartition set will get the values up to this. That value is called the alpha. So we are not going to details of such things. So let us, let us look at why this graceful labeling has become so important in the beginning. A column ruler, you all must be knowing. So first application in any textbook, in any research paper, if you see what is the application of graceful graphs, you will get this application first. A column ruler is a marked straight edge such that the distances between different pairs of marks on the straight edge are distinct. One end is zero end, and the distance from the zero end to the other end is the length of the ruler. A typical real life ruler has marks at a specified distance interval along the entire length of the ruler. Suppose we take n minus one distinct marks placed at integer distances from the zero end of the ruler. We want to find a ruler such that the distance between any two marks is distinct. That is a problem of ruler. This is, here is an example of a golem ruler. See, you have marked zero, one, four, 10, 12, 17. I can measure 1 here. I can measure 3 here. I can measure 2 here. I can measure 4 here. Likewise, I can measure all the measures from 1 to 17. So that is what is this column rule. So how does it is connected to a uh, connected to the graceful graph? As I already told you, the 17 is the optimum value that you need to be to have on this ruler. 
and there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Six marks are there, and there are there is seventeen is the largest number. This is what we what I told you in the beginning. The optimum value that you need to have need to measure all the distances from one to seventy. So the last mark is considered at the end of the ruler. Also, we treat the zero as the other end mark so that the ruler has a total of n marks. This type of ruler is called column ruler, after Professor Solomon Colomb, who helped to popularize questions about rulers. A column ruler that is of minimum length for a given number of marks is called an optimum column ruler or OGR. We want to make minimum number of marks on the ruler. And what is that particular maximum value that you want to put on that? That is what is called optimum column ruler. How do we connect it with our graceful graph? If the set of distances between marks is every positive integer up to and including the length of the ruler. If you want all the consecutive numbers from one, two, three, etc., up to Q, then our ruler is a perfect column ruler. That is, if you can mark a ruler in such a way that you get all the minimum number of marks should be given there, and you get all the consecutive values up to zero to the last value that you have marked. If such a Ruler X is, we, we call that ruler a perfect column ruler. So there are no perfect column, column rulers on more than four marks. Equivalently, the graph Kn is graceful if and only if there is a perfect column ruler on N marks. In other words, we have already seen that Kn is graceful if and only if n is less than or equal to 4. So what do we understand is actually existence of perfect column ruler is nothing but existence of gracefulness for complete graph. So they are directly connected like that. If the set of distances between marks is that is equivalently as we already discussed, equivalently, the graph Kn is graceful if and only if n is less than or equal to 4. We can lift ruler problems to questions about graceful graphs by using the correspondence between ruler and label to complete graphs. This correspondence gives us that the column rulers are equivalent to complete subgraphs of graceful graphs. This is very important. So, what are the complete subgraphs sitting inside a graceful graph that can be used as column rulers? Another important application of graceful labeling is in communication network, we take a communication center as a vertex or a node and the link between two centers as an edge. Considering n plus 1 vertices, that is communication centers, numbered with 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., n, and then the difference between the vertex labels is the label of a particular edge between the two vertices. If the communication center grid is represented in a labeled graph, then as a result, each communication center, that is vertex, according to our network, and connection between such center, that is an edge in our network, has distinct levels. So suppose if connection between two centers is left out, then a simple algorithm could detect which two vertices are no longer linked with edges, since each edge is labeled with difference between two vertices. Also, this network satisfies the vertex and edge level conditions of graceful labeling, which is an additional benefit. So this is another important application of graceful labeling. 
Graceful labeling of a tree is useful to establish a new image scrambling to detect the facial characteristics such as eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and nose. Graceful labeling active appearance method is used. This imaging processing, if somebody is doing, they must be knowing how this graceful labeling is very active in this. This is applied in face recognition, image pre-processing, and it is also useful in statistical redundancy reduction of compact coding. To synthesize a complete image face, both shape and texture are modeled. The active appearance model represents both shapes, texture variations, which is observed in a training image set and the correlation between them. Properties of potential numbering system for such a network has been explored under the guise of graceful numbering. That is, the property of graceful graphs provide design parameters for an appropriate communication network. So it is being proved that the maximum number of links in a network with M transmission centers can be shown to be 30 asymptotically limited to not more than two by three of the possible links in a new block. These are some of the uh, studies that has been, or some of the applications that are being used with respect. So, because, uh, but computer science people are always look at the computational problems involving to check whether a given, uh, given graph is graceful or not. So what is being established is all trees at most 27 vertices are graceful. So this is uh, something about the graceful graph. Of course, I know that I am not giving all, the, if you want to have the variations of graceful graph, that itself will, we may have to talk for more than 10 to 12 hours. So I will give you the, uh, uh, the literature also of the, the papers or reference for you, for you to have a more look at it. Next important graph labeling problem is harmonious graphs. It is being introduced by Graham and Sloan. A graph G with Q edges Q greater than or equal to one is harmonious. If there is an injection F from the vertices of G to the group of integers modulus Q, such that when each x, x, y is assigned the label f of x plus f of y mod Q, the resulting edge labels are all distinct. Then f is a harmonious label. So we were looking at difference between two sets. Here we take a modulo class, adding the vertex values, incident vertex values, and taking a, it mod to the size of the graph. One can easily verify that harmonious labeling is not unique. Here I have K4, we have different labelings for K4. So, we do not know even graceful graphs are unique or not. Graceful labeling is unique or not. However, harmonious labeling is not unique. If F is a harmonious labeling of any graph G with the Q edges, then this result is very important. If you have already a, see, we want to connect it with a algebraic concept, then A F of X plus B is also a harmonious labeling of G. What is this A? This A is an invertible element of Z2, set of integers modulo Q. And B is any arbitrary element from the set one, two, three, et cetera, Q. So if you have a harmonious labeling with of a graph G with Q edges, then A times F of X, this, this is a harmonious index plus B is also a harmonious labeling of this, this figure illustrates that theorem. Let us again have a look at some known results on harmonious labeling. 
Graham and Slane constructed that every tree is harmonious. And they proved that this again is a conjecture. Tree will open, still open. It is not being settled. KMN is harmonious if and only if M or N equal to 1. Peterson graph is harmonious. Except L2 or ladders are harmonious. And uh, as uh, like in graceful graph, complete graph is harmonious if and only if n is less than or equal to 4. And Alfred and Machid gave an algorithm and used the computer to show that all trees with utmost 26 vertices are harmonious. For graceful graphs, we have seen up to 27 vertices are proved to be graceful. Here, up to 26 vertices are harmonious. So people were trying to look at what are those graphs which are harmonious, just like a graceful. So they have tried in many ways, and it is proved that if you consider all, all graphs with vertices less than or equal to 5, except these six graphs, all other graphs with that is number of vertices less than or equal to 5 are harmonious. Or in other words, these are the six graphs which are non-harmonious -harmon with vertices less than or equal to 5. Now, if you want to give labeling for tree, then you will have a you will have a you will have to give a relaxation for harmonious tree. That is, if it's harmonious labeling of G with E edges, if it is possible to label vertices with the distinct elements f of x of z e such that f of x y equal to f of x plus f. So it it has to be observed that in the case of trees, exactly we allow two vertices to be repeated. Two vertices should receive the same sign to make it harmonious. This is an example of a, a small tree which is harmoniously labeled. You can see that the vertex level 1 and 1 should be. It is because of the property that the number p is equal to 2 minus 1. Therefore, one vertex has to be repeated. We allow one, one vertex labeling to get repeated. Again, the conjecture still stands open. All trees are harmonious. So the harmonious labeling is one of the most important labeling techniques. As all graphs are not harmonious, it is very interesting to investigate graphs or graph families which admit harmonious labeling. Another important or particular version of graceful and harmonious labeling is cordial labeling, which is introduced by Cahill. He introduced this cordial labeling in 1987 as a weaker version of graceful and harmonious labeling. Let us see what it is. Suppose G equal to V, E is a graph with vertex set V and edge set E. A vertex labeling f from v to 0, 1 induces an edge labeling x star from e to 0, 1 defined by x star of x, y equal to the absolute difference of f of x minus f of y. Denote the, let us denote the numbers of zero vertices, one vertices, zero edges, that is the value of the vertex with 0, 1 the value of the edge with 0, 1 by V suffix F and E suffix F. So you take I belongs to 0, 1. Let V F of I and E F of I be the number of vertices V and edges E with F of V equal to I and F star of E equal to I respectively. A graph G is cordial. If there exists a vertex labeling F such that the absolute difference of the number of vertices which receives labeled 0 and the number of vertices which 
this is less than 1, the difference should be less than or equal to 1. And the number of edges that receives the label 0 and the number of edges that receives label 1 also should be less than or equal to 0. So this is what we say by cordial labeling. This is an example of a cordial labeling. See here, vertex 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, and with 1, 1, hello, two, 3, 4, yes. Uh, madam, excuse yes. me, ma'am. Yes. Uh, ma'am, uh, sound is a little bit. I'm going to do messages. I'm going to do sound. They are not able to hear. Uh, sound is very low. Okay, I, I will try. Uh, no, ma'am. Now, also, it is not audible. Uh, not audible? Okay, it's audible, but the sound is very low. Oh, it is full. Ma'am, lap is full. Lap is Yeah, let me check. One minute. It is hundred. Yeah. Uh, hello. Ma'am, uh, headset you use and uh, are you able to take? Uh, sound Just as a trial. Headset is not Okay. 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 Is it okay now? Okay, now it's okay, ma'am. Now. Okay, then it's I will. Okay. Do the sorry, ma'am. Sorry for the interruption. No, it's okay, it's okay. No problem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now I do not know how to make it uh, bigger. Yeah. Full screen. Ma'am, the audio is now clear. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I am trying to make it a full screen again, but I'm not getting it. Yeah. Oh, fine. Okay. I'm sorry. I will, I will do it one minute. Okay, I don't know, it is not coming. Hello? Yeah? Control A on the press A. Control, Control A. Control A. Ah. L, L, sorry, L. Okay, uh, Control A is for choosing. Uh, se Control for selecting all. Control L. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, ma'am. So let us have a look at the known results on cordial labeling. That is, uh, a group of people, a uh, whole Lee and she, proved that unicycle graph is cordial except for C4K plus 2K belongs to N. Generalized Peterson graph PNK is cordial if and only if N is congruent to 2 mod 4. Cartesian product of two cordial graphs of V1 size is cordial. And Benson and Lee de uh, determined KMN, the N copies of KM, that are precisely which ones are cordial for M strictly less than 14. Cahit proved that complete bipartite graphs KMN are cordial for all M and N. Wheel graph WN is cordial if and only if N is congruent to 3 mod 4. She and Ho again proved that the path union of cycles, Peterson graphs, trees, wheels are cordial. The one point union of N copies of flag FN, that is, with the common point being the root, is cordial. So these are some of the non-results in cordial graphs. If you 
check those papers i will give you those papers in those papers i know there are plenty of open problems and conjectures uh, which we can try again another uh, another version of cordial labeling is difference cordial labeling the gba pq graph that f from v of g to 1 2 3 etc q p be a function let b is the order of the graph for each edge u v assign the label absolute difference f of u minus f of v f is called a difference cordial labeling if f is 1 to 1 map and cardinality with absolute difference of the number of edges receiving 0 and 1 is less than or equal to 1 as as previously where e f of 1 and e f of 0 denote the number of edges labeled with 1 and not labeled with 1 here here actually we are not strictly saying that the edge label should receive 1 and 0 here e f of 1 means the number of edges labeled with 1 and e f of 0 means not labeled with 1 that is the difference a graph which admits a difference cordial labeling is called a difference cordial graph again there are some results uh, uh, so regarding difference cordial labeling of course and then in uh, when we apply this kind of uh, labelings to sociograms and all we need uh, when do we have a balanced way of Uh, defining the labeling so people define the balanced cordial labeling it is a, a cordial labeling first of all which is it is the condition that e f of 0 equal to e f of 1 and v f of 0 equal to v f of 1 it is said to be balanced said to be edge balanced see both e f of 0 equal to e f of 1 and v f of 0 equal to v f of 1 we say it is a balanced cordial labeling and it is said to be edge balanced cordial labeling if e f of 0 minus e f of 1 equal to 0 but we allow v f of 0 minus v f of 1 equal to 1 and this similarly it is said to be vertex balanced we allow this edge difference number of edges receiving 0 and 1 should be difference can be equal to 1 but v f of 0 minus v f of 1 is equal to 0 a cordial graph g is said to be unbalanced cordial graph if both the difference is equal to 1 that is e f of 0 minus e f of 1 is 1 and v f of 0 minus v f of 1 is also equal to 1 with respect to application this balanced cordial labeling is very important again another version of cordial labeling is k cordial labeling the concept of a cordial labeling was introduced by hove that is let let us define it first in general case you take any abelian group a star a graph g v e is said to be a cordial if there is a mapping f from vertex set to this abelian group a which satisfies the following two conditions when the edge e equal to uv is labeled as f of u star f of u the conditions are the two conditions are the first condition is v f of a minus v f of v less than or equal to 1 what is v f of a it is a number of vertices with the label a and v f of b is the number of vertices with the label b they should differ by 1 less than or equal to 1 second condition is e f of a minus e f of b is less than or equal to 1 for all a comma b belongs to a what is e f of a the number of edges with label a and e f of b is the number of edges with the label b now if in particular if you take the abelian group a as set k addition modulo k that is the additive group of addition modulo k then this labeling is named as k cordial labeling so actually you can generalize this cordial labeling to any abelian group and you can specifically fix some group and then study the 
K cordial valent group. This modulo K value, this, that is why we call it K cordial left. In particular, let us see what is a V4 cordial. We all know what is a V4. So consider the graph G equal to V comma E with vertex set V of G and edge set E of G. It is said to be V4 cordial if there exists a mapping F from V of G to instead of the abelian group, we take the abelian group V4 here, which satisfies the following two conditions. When the edge G equal to UV is labeled as f of u star f of u. The first condition is v f of p minus v f of q less than or equal to one for all p comma q belongs to v4, where v f of p is the number of vertices with the label p, v f of q is the number of vertices with the label q. Similarly, the absolute difference between e f of p minus e f of q is less than or equal to one, where e f of p is number of edges with the label p, and E F of Q is the number of edges with the label Q. Another version of cordial labeling is prime cordial. A prime cordial labeling of a graph G with vertex set V is a bijection F from V to one, two, three, etc. P such that if each edge UV is assigned the label one, if when do the edge label get the labeling one if the GCD of F of V and F of U equal to one. And this edge receives the label zero if the GCD is greater than one. The number of edges, then the number of edges labeled with zero and the number of edges labeled with one differ at most by one then we call that particular labeling a prime cordial. A graph which admits prime cordial labeling is said to be a prime cordial graph. Another version of cordial labeling is divisor cordial labeling. The graph G equal to VE with a vertex set V of G and the edge set E of G and F from V of G to one, two, three, etc. P a bijection. For each edge UV, assign the label one if f of u divides f of u. Or f of v divides f of u. Either f of u divides f of v or f of v divides f of u give the labeling of the edge, that particular edge as edge UV as one. Otherwise, give zero. Then F is called the divisor cordial labeling. If E F of zero minus E F of one, the absolute difference is less than or equal to one. A graph with the divisor cordial labeling is called a divisor cordial graph. Because again, uh, it, uh, it is a, a Sometimes we feel very uneasy with this labeling problems that what all the researchers do is, including me, what we do is we take a network and just look at whether that particular network is having, admitting this particular labeling or not. So if not, we will go for different classes of graphs or we will construct different classes of graphs or we adjoin different classes of graphs and then uh, make that particular structure a uh, uh, structure to admit the particular labeling that we want. Actually, uh, other way has to be done. If you want to put it as a program or algorithmic point of view, we want to, we, we have the uh, network first and then we will have to go for a, this one. So, that is an, uh, one of the main drawback of graph labeling problems. So with respect to this uh, cordial graphs, uh, how to give a network, and if you are asked to check whether it is cordial graph is computational, 
computationally it is NB complete. So, uh, so there comes the frustration actually of doing all these things and we cannot compute it. But however, for a, uh, for a, for a, for a network whose structure is well known to us, and if you want to apply it to an application uh, network, we have every way to do it. Given a very complicated network and asking me to check whether it is coding graph is computation time is NB complete. So another uh, labeling problem is K equitable labeling of graphs. In 1990, Kahit himself proposed the idea of distributing the vertex and edge labels among 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera, K minus 1 as evenly as possible to get a generalization of graceful labeling. What, we, what he suggests is take a graph G equal to V comma E and a positive integer K, assign vertex labels from 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., K minus 1, so that when the edge labels introduced by the absolute value of the difference of the vertex labels, the number of vertices labeled with I and the number of vertices labeled with J differ by at most one, and the number of edges labeled with I and the number of edges labeled with J differ by at most one. Kahit called a graph with such an assignment labels K equitable. This is an example of a two equitable graph. So there are some results. Again, he posed the conjecture that all trees are creatable, which cannot, which could not be settled till now. However, uh, Spare and all proved that all trees are tree equitable. There are some classes of graphs has been identified which are not tree equitable graphs, just like graceful graphs. So it has some connection with the graceful graphs also. You have seen that like Eulerian graph with a certain a uh, Q congruent of something is not graceful. Here also somewhat the same result is occurring for this K equitable labeling of graphs also. So one can uh, uh, definitely check at how, how far they coincide, graceful graphs and K equitable graphs. Another well-known and uh, very much discussed labeling is magic labeling. And people say that, uh, I think many of us believe that uh, at least some of the labeling problems are of some puzzle type thing. Maybe magic labeling was started like that, but it is important because of its application. We will see to that at the end. A magic graph is a graph whose edges are labeled by positive integers so that the sum over the edges incident with any vertex is the same independent of the choice of the vertex, or it is a graph that has such a labeling. If the integers are the first Q positive integers, where Q is the number of edges, the graph and the labeling are called super magic. If we can assign the vertex, sorry, edges of the graph with the one, two, three, et cetera, Q, if Q is the size of the graph, and then find this magic constant. It is called a super magic graph. A, a graph is vertex magic if its vertices can be labeled so that the sum on any edge is the same. It is the total magic if its edges and vertices can be labeled so that the vertex label plus the sum of the labels on edges incident with that vertex is constant. I'm quite sure you must be knowing all these concepts. I just want to make you to recall all these labelings once again. So let us have a look at edge magic labelling. F from V of G to union E of G to one, two, three, et cetera, V of G union E of G is edge magic if F of X plus F of Y plus F of X, Y is a constant C for any X, Y belongs to E of G. F is called super magic if additionally 
f of v of g is assigned as 1, 2, 3, etc. v of g and f of e of g is v of g plus 1, etc. v of g union e of g. What I have already said, I have put it in mathematical way. That's all. Pass and caterpillars are edge magic. In 1970, there are many more results regarding this edge magic and all. Then there are other versions of alpha magic graphs and beta magic graphs and all, which we skip. Uh, there are some examples also. Let us go to this AD edge and magic total labeling. An AD edge and magic total labeling of a PQ graph G is a bijective function H from V of G union E of G to 1, 2, 3, etc. P plus Q, where P is the order and Q is the size of the graph, with the property that the edge weights weight H of V equal to weight H of V equal to H of U plus H of V, UV plus H of V for every edge UV in the graph G form an arithmetic progression. Instead of constant, this form an arithmetic progression A, A plus B, A plus 2D, etc. A plus Q minus 1 into D, where A greater than 0 and D greater than or equal to 0 are two fixed integers. This is a common difference. Furthermore, if H is super AD, H anti magic, total labeling of G, if the vertex labels are the integers 1, 2, 3, etc., P and the edge definitely P plus 1, P plus 2, etc., Q. This is instead of getting a constant value for H of U, H of U, V plus H of V, we get a sequence of numbers which are in arithmetic progression. It is called AD, edge, and the magic total labeling. You must be knowing anti-magic. All the numbers should be different. That is what is called anti-magic. Just the uh, ultra version of magic graphs. So, uh, sequential graph labeling is very important. It is an injective labeling F of a graph G with P vertices is said to be C harmonious if the vertex labels from, of course, read it as P, 0, 1, 2, etc., P minus 1, and the edge labels induced by f of x plus f of y for each edge x, y are c, c plus x, c plus 1, etc., c plus q minus 1. It is in a sequence. Grace called such a label being sequential. This is actually the common difference is 1. As a why I said the sequential labeling is I want to go to KD arithmetic labeling, which is a very important labeling. Ajari and Heg, they have in generalized the sequential labeling as follows. So G be a graph with Q edges, of course P edges, P vertices, K and D be positive integers. A labeling F of G is said to be KD arithmetic. If the vertex labels are distinct, non-negative integers and the edge labels induced by f of x plus f of y of each edge x, y are k, k plus d, k plus 2d, etc., k plus q minus 1 into d. They obtained a num and this, this paper is a very important paper. Many have taken up this paper and there are plenty of papers on a KD arithmetic and other version of KD arithmetic graphs. So from this, in this paper itself, they explain what are indexable graphs. The GBAPQ graph, a labeling f of G is said to be an indexer f from V of G to 0, 1, 2, etc., P minus 1, be such that the induced values on the edges f plus of UV equal to f of U plus f of V are all distinct. We don't say that there should be consecutive from 1, 2, 3, etc., Q or Nothing like that. Only thing is that it should be an injective mark. A graph that admits such an indexer is called indexable graph. So we make a little more condition on indexability and get k strongly indexable graphs. A PQ graph G equal to V comma A is said to be strongly indexable 
if it admits a strong indexer, that is, f an indexer such that f plus of e, f plus of e of g should be one two three etc. Q in general g is said to be k indexable if it admits a strong k indexer that is an indexer such that this f plus of e of g is k k plus one k plus two etc. K plus q minus instead of one two three etc. Q we give start from a value k and then k plus q minus. Similarly, k strong harmonious graphs also is defined by Chan. A PQ graph G to be strongly k harmonious if it admits a strong k harmonious labeling, which is a labeling f from 0, 1 to 3 from the vertex set to 2, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., q minus 1, such that f plus of g equal to k, k plus 1, k plus 2, k plus q minus 1. It is easily seen that the notion of strongly k harmonious graphs and strongly k indexable graphs agree on the class of unicyclic graphs. So I know that there are many more number valuations, number labelings to be discussed. Uh, but however, the very common one, maybe the, uh, the, the versions from one to the other, I have not looked at. But these are some of the basic or main number labelings that you can think of. Uh, my work is mainly on set valuations or set labeled graphs. Why I have switched from number labeling to set valuation, I have a reason for that. We have tried many embedding problems and uh, uh, computational, uh, uh, computation risk to check whether a given graph is numbered with or labeled with a particular kind of labeling, uh, I always get a feeling that always this labeling goes to a routine way of taking a class or constructing a class and then saying that whether it is graceful, giving some labeling and then proving that. So uh, of course it is, it is important and it is good to have uh, when we apply it to ap applications. So uh, I was a bit uh, tired of doing such work and then I switched to such labeled graphs, which I find very many applications, not only that, very much interesting also. It is very much connection to discrete structures like set theory, logics, and uh, learning graphs and uh, whatnot. So I, uh, 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 so I switched my work to set labeling of graphs. Of course, uh, motivated from number valuation, we, I proceeded to set label graphs. Is this set valuation, of course, is introduced by B.D. Acharya in 80s, 1983, first of all. Uh, a set valuation, let us have a look at what do we mean by set valuation of a graph G equal to V assigns to the vertices or edges of G elements with the power set 2 power X of a given non-empty set X subject to certain conditions. Uh, in particular, Ajaria defined a set indexer of G first. We just now we have seen what we mean by an indexer from AD arithmetic graphs. He generalized it to a set. What do we mean by a set indexer of G? It is an injective set valuation from F from V of G to the power set of X. Take an underlined set X, any non-empty set X, such that the induced set valuation F plus from edge set to two power X on the edges of G defined by F plus of U V as the symmetric difference of F of U and F of V for every UV in the edge set of the graph G. This F plus is also should be injective. 
So you are assigning f from v of g to 2 power x in an injective way. You are getting and f plus and the induced edge function, which is equal to the symmetric difference between the end values and end vertices values is also injective. It's just like indexer. You have seen that f from vertex 32, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. p minus 1, such that the induced function is also injective means it is an indexer of a graph. Here, instead of number valuation, we are getting the taking the power set of a ground set and then defining it. And he has proved that all graphs admit index, all graphs are indexed graphs. Here it is an example of an indexed graph. I have taken one, two, three, four. I have given the subsets of on the edges in a one, one manner. You can see that I have not given all the values on the edges. It, it, is, a, it is a subset of the power set. Empty set one, two, three. And then you can take the symmetric reference and see that it is one. So we are we we started our uh, number valuation with graceful graph. So what is that graceful graph? Natural to ask. Ajaria defined G to be set graceful. If there exists a set indexer f from v of g to two power x, right? you know you remember what is set indexer? Both f and f plus are injective. Such that if you see that this set indexer gives you this result also. That is the collection of edge values, induced edge values is equal to two power x minus empty set, the power set minus empty set. Can this empty set be an, be an edge label? No, because f is one, one. So when you take the symmetric difference, you will never get an empty set on t. So he, he accepted this empty set from the edge set. Such a set indexer is called a set graceful label. See, graceful labeling, you remember, on the edges, we have to receive one, two, three, et cetera, up to Q number of uh, the size of the graph. Here also the same thing. Instead of that power set, all the power set except empty set. There, zero is not there. Here, empty set is not there. So very much similar in generalization of num graceful graphs to set graceful graphs. This is an example of a set graceful graph. I give empty set one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let us, let us look at this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, all one element set. Here my underground set is, underlying set is one, two, three, four, X is equal to one, two, three, four. So all one element set is there, one, two, three, four, and about two element, one, two, one, three, one, four, two, three, two, four, three, four. So all the three elements set, take the symmetric difference. Two, three, four, one, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, three, and this is one, two, three, four. So all the power, all the elements in the power set except empty set is on the edge. So this is a set graceful labeling of this graph. So you must have heard of topological indices and all. So what is a topologically set graceful graph? That is, it is also called a T-set indexer, topologically set indexer. First of all, it is a set indexer and it is a set graceful, sorry, set indexer such that what, what should be there? The collection of vertex set should be a topology. The assignments that you are giving on the vertex set that are subsets of the power set, that is elements of the power set, they should form a topology. Then if you can give such a labeling, which is a set indexer, of course, F plus should be injective. 
then we say that it is a topologically set index subset. So, so the, thereby you establish actually a link between graph theory and point set topology. So when do you say that it is a topologically set graceful, set graceful graph? It should be a set graceful graph plus f of v of g should give you a topology. That is a t set indexer is graceful, that is topologically set graceful if f plus of e of g is the 2 power x minus 1. And a given graph is t set graceful if it admits a graceful t set indexer. Here is an example of a topologically set graceful. Look at the vertex labeling 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This form a topology and you get all the powers, all the elements in the power set on the edges. So it is a topologically set graceful graph. Next important set labeling is set sequential graph. A graph G equal to V comma E is set sequential. If there exists a bijective set evaluation F from V union E to 2 power X minus N to set such that F of UV equal to F of U plus F of V for every, this is symmetric difference belongs to E, where this ignores the symmetric difference and 2 power X is as usual. Here, see you remember set sequential numbering sequential numbering. Here it is set sequential. It is you are distributing this power set minus empty set among the vertex set and the edge set. Of course, edge set should be the induced edge values. Another important uh, 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 set valuation is some sets of integer sets. Actually, this is very much connected with number theory. So I think it is uh, good to discuss it here. Let A and B be two sets of non-negative integers. Then the sum set A and B is denoted by A plus B is defined by A plus B equal to the set A plus B equal to A plus B such that A belongs to A, B belongs to B, which is also a set of non-negative integers. If either A or B is countably infinite, then their some set A plus B is also countably infinite set. And if any one of them is null set, then the some set is also a null set. Hence only non-empty finite sets of non-negative integers are considered for this some set of integer sets. So integer additive set labeling of graphs. That is, let X be a non-empty subset of the set N naught and P of X is power set. An integer additive set labeling of a given graph G is an injective set valued function V of G to P, sorry, which we have seen already, which induces a function F plus from V of G to P of zero defined by F plus of U V equal to F of U plus F of V, where this f of u plus f of v e is the sum set of the set labels of the vertices u and v, which you have already defined in the previous slide. An integer additive set indexer of a graph G is an integer additive set labeling f from v of G to p, p naught of x of G, such that the induced function f plus from e of G to p zero of x is defined by f plus of u v equal to f of u plus f of v e is also injective. Similarly, you have arithmetic integer additive set indexer of a graph G is an integer additive set indexer F of G with respect to which the set levels of all vertices and edges of GP are in arithmetic progression sets. A graph with that admits arithmetic IASI is called arithmetic IASI graph. Uh, I think I should skip a little bit. It's the same same uh, concepts topology you can uh, introduce in this, and then additives and graceful labeling can be 
into this. This is another important concept in set valuation of graphs, that is distance compatible set labeling of graphs. So we call it DCSL. It is something connected with the distance also. Very, very uh, important applications are there um, uh, because of this existence of DCSL level. We define distance compatible set labeling of a graph G as an injective set assignment F from V of G to 2 power X, X an on empty ground set such that the corresponding induced function F plus from V of G cross V of G to 2 power X minus Y defined by F plus of UV is F of U symmetric difference F of V satisfies this cardinality of this edge value is k times the shortest distance between u and v. This k is a constant. It need not be an integer in general. And if it is an integer, we say it is a k uniform DCSL. And it is, if it is a fixed integer k, we define Dispersible DCSL graphs, edge dispersible DCSL graph, KR arithmetic DCSL graph, K uniform DCSL graphs are all special classes of DCSL graph. You can see some four or five uh, PhD thesis on this concept, expand, expanded version of this. We define DCSL index of a graph as the minimum cardinality of the graph to set X such that G admits a DCSL level. These are some of the examples of distance compatible uh, set labelings of graphs. I'm going a little bit speed because I would like to go to the application level. This is this one, one, two. Here, the, unlike the other set evaluations, there you need to look at only the edges. It is not like that. For every pair of vertices, you have to find the symmetric difference and then it is connected with its distance. It is somewhat very much connected to resolving sets and all. Uh, I I'm not uh, going to that now. And let, this, is this is important in the sense that it is very much used in image processing and all this kind of DCSL labeling that is let us have a look at what do we mean by KR arithmetic DCSL. A DCSL F of a graph G is KR arithmetic if the constants of proportionality with respect to K. I told you the cardinality of the edge in uh, edge value in, 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 in uh, edge set that is induced edge set is K times its distance. This K, if they are all different means, we call it dispersible graph. And if you can say that this K, K plus R, K plus 2 are that K times D of UV, K1 is K, K2 times uh, D of UV, that K2 is K plus R, another K3 is K plus 2 are like that. Then we say G admits KR arithmetic DCSN. There are many more, uh, what to say, many more uh, um, variations in the, this DCSL graph, which I am now skipping. Let us go to the application of uh, this one, more applications. We have seen some applications specifically for graceful graphs. And here we will discuss about the other number labelings as well as the set labeling. <coughs> Suppose we classify a network as LAN, local area networks, inside one building, or WAN, wide area network, between buildings. I can assign labels to each user designated as vertex and their communication links designated by edges receiving distinct labels. In such a way, the numbers of any two communicating terminals automatically specify by symbol subtraction, the link label of the connecting path. And conversely, 
the path label uniquely specifies the pair of user terminals which it interconnects. The most successful commercial application in wireless network is cellular networks. I'm definite that people uh, accept this application as a labeling. Suppose you are, you can, uh, you can label a given network in a harmonious way. That is, harmonious graphs uh, are useful. Harmoniously labeled graph network is useful in error correcting codes, channel assignment problems. And in, uh, specifically, odd harmonious labeling is useful to solve undetermined equations as described by Liang and Bai. You can just see their uh, paper. It is very, very well explained how this odd harmonious labeling is used. This is a very specific uh, uh, application the sensor network is structured as a graph and we use Voroni graph to analyze the communication. This graph is structured as a harsh topology where the boundary is considered as a range or edges and sensor is considered as a vertex. One of these sensors would be the cluster head for reporting function. And this graph, there are two sensors have common boundary and they are called neighbors. I have uh, drawn a uh, graph for that. This is the graph. Here, you just take this W and v, B. See, they have a common edge here. So they are W and B are called neighbors. Similarly, AC, AE, AH, etc., are all neighbors. If they share a common boundary, then they are called neighbors. If object cross the boundary of a sensor or enter into the F sensing range, then the neighbors of F sensor is probably reported by previous sensor. Uh, this graph, uh, many people who are attending this program must be knowing honeycomb, yeah. Here, any two neighbors can communicate easily because the transmission range is large enough. In the sensor network, we trace any kind of object using a Voroni graph for the effective communication. Another uh, labeling is radio labeling. I'm not quite sure whether I have told you what it is. We'll see that. Channel assignment problems sometimes have an unpleasant experience of being on the phone, we get someone who is on the same line. So this is due to this interference caused by unconstrained simultaneous transmissions. Two good enough channels can interfere or damaging communications with the suitable channel assignment, we can avoid interference. So, Chatrin, Redwin, Harare, and Hang in, uh, Zhang introduced the graph labeling with limitations related to the radial labeling, radio labeling. A channel that is a positive integer is assigned to each station from a set of transmitters such that conflicts can be averted. So in a city, multiple radio channels are broadcasting. If the radio networks are three or some small number, then it is easy for the network architect to label the channels in different way. But when the network is with huge number of broadcasters, then gap of efficiency increases as the number of broadcasts increases. So we use the mathematical model to be accurate in predicting the most suitable method of broadcasting as our graph is chain graph and Euclidean distance between the broadcasters corresponds to the graph distance. To avoid interference in huge graph, we use radio labeling. In coding theory also, this labeling concept is very much applied. The design of certain important classes of good non-periodic codes for pulse radar and missile guidance is equivalent to 
labeling the complete graph in such a way that all the edge labels are distinct. The node labels then determine the time positions at which the pulses are transmitted. In X-ray crystallography, X-ray refraction is one of the most powerful techniques for characterizing the structural properties of crystalline solids in which a beam of X-ray strikes a crystal and refracts into many specific directions. In some cases, more than one structure has the same refraction information. And this problem is mathematically equivalent to determining all labeling of the appropriate graphs, which produce a pre-specified set of edge labels. So label graphs are applied in X-ray crystallography also. In communication network addressing, a communication network is composed of nodes, each of which has computing power and can transmit and receive messages over communication links, wireless or cable. The basic network topologies are include fully connected mesh, star, ring, tree or bus. A single network may consist of several interconnected subnets of different topologies. Networks are further classified into LAN and WAN. And then they, it might be useful to assign each user terminal a node label, subject to the constraint that all connecting edges receive distinct labels. In this way, numbers of any two communicating terminals automatically specify a symbol subtraction or sometimes even addition the link label of the connecting path. And conversely, the path label uniquely specifies the pair of user terminals which it interconnects. Now, given a set of transmitters, each station is assigned a channel such that interference can be avoided. The distance between the station is the stronger the interference becomes and hence the difference in channel assignment has to be greater. Here, each vertex represents transmitter and any pair of vertices connected through an edge corresponds to neighboring transmitters. So when we study this transmitter, let us see what we mean by radio labeling. It is defined as if you are given a graph, connected graph, and duv is the geodesic between u and v, that is the distance between any two vertices. The maximum distance between any pair of vertices is called the diameter. And a radio labeling or multi-level distance labeling for g is an injective function f from v of g to n union zero, such that for any vertices u and v, the absolute difference of f of u plus f of v is greater than or equal to the diameter of the given network minus the distance between this pair of vertices u and v plus one. So that interference can be avoided if you have such a labeling for the network. Uh, I think. Oh, next, shall we have a look at the facility graph. A facility graph is a graph G whose nodes represent system facilities and whose edges represent, the, represent access links between facilities. A facility here is said to be a hardware or software components of any system that can fail independently. Hardware facilities include control units, arithmetic processors, storage units, input output equipments, Software facility include compilers, application program, library routines, operation systems, etc. Since each facility can access some other facilities, the real time systems are represented as a facility graph. Facility types are indicated by numbers in parentheses, which is termed as graph vertex labeling. The graph indicates the type of facilities accessed by other facilities. 
the node x1 access the nodes x2 x3 see what we are saying is that if you if you label the particular network given and make it a facility graph whenever any node fails no need to worry about the communication link because here the facility graph find out another path and communication process with this labeling with this way of labeling the network to find an efficient way safe transmissions are needed in areas such as cellular telephony wifi security system and many more in a private communication the channel assignment problem in which close transmitters must receive different channels and very close transmitters must receive channels that are at least two apart this problem is addressed by means of modeling the network wireless lan in the form of an interface graph and solving it using graph te labeling technique in the interface graph the access points are in the interfering with some other access points in the same region this graph is called the interference graph which is constructed by access points as nodes an undirected edge is connecting these nodes if the nodes interfere with each other when using the same channel now the channel allocation problem is converted to a labeling problem that is a vertex labeling problem another uh, uh, another uh, <clears throat> application is vertex cover algorithm it is used to stimulate the propagation of worms on large computer networks and design optimal strategies to protect the network against the virus attacks in real time the importance of finding the worm propagation is to hinder them in a real time the main idea applied here is to find a minimum vertex cover in the graph whose vertices are the routing servers and the edges are the connecting between the routing servers then an optimal solution is found for worm worm propagation as we have already seen Uh, regarding this uh, uh, set evaluation actually we will have to look at online communities and all we know very much you, people are aware of that small world problems and it is very interesting to see that recently uh i just forgot the name they have proved that the diameter of this small world network is 5 that is uh we, you can contact other person by by traveling five steps in any in any complicated small world network that is one thing another one is important contribution to social network analysis came from sociograms this is a very direct application of set evaluation a sociogram can be seen as a graphical representation of a network people are represented by dots and the relations by lines connecting these nodes it is interesting to see what this communication facilities to do the people who use them online communities are used by people who have never met each other physically are sharing ideas opinions feelings and so on online community which is dealing here is known as a small world a small world is characterized by the fact that every two person can reach each other through a chain of just a handful of messages it is a phenomenon of messages traveling through a network of email users users are linked by virtue of knowing each other and the resulting network exhibit 
properties of small words effectively connecting every person to the other through relatively small chain of such links describing and characterizing this and other networks form the essence of network science uh, i think uh, it is 11:45 should i continue or should i wait for the questions organizers please shall i take uh, five more minutes shall i take five more minutes uh, okay ma'am you can take five more minutes after that we can go through our question session yeah this application requires an agreement in between source and destination of any kind of network it is a security by both of them should hold a kind of labeling of course it may not be applied in all packets but majority sure the information of packet should be suitable for the kind of labeling in the agreement um, there are many more uh, to mention about this application and i just skip it and regarding open problems those who are interested to do something in this you can just have a look at this very recent paper professor s armoham gs bloom etc some open problems on graph labeling which is published in ksc international journal of graphs and combinatorics in 2009 and another is Maslin and Martin open problems presented at the algorithmic graph theory on Adriatic Coast workshop. Joseph A. Gallien open problems in grid labeling. And to mention some of them, the open problems of Paul Ridos Journal of Graph Theory, Vidya Jaya K. Jamina Situations of Graph and Their Applications. So they, Chitra and Jamina, on integer additive set valuations of finite Jacob graphs, open problems for Bardabos graph theory workshop 2018, and I have mentioned some of the open problems here, which due to the uh, time constraint, and there are many more references also. Okay, I'm I am here to. Hear from you, the audience. Yeah, I am waiting for any questions. Hello. Yes. It's the time to clarify your doubts, and you can take some time to ask the questions. Or, Raj, you can put your questions in the question box in your Zoom control panel, or or in the YouTube chat box. Anybody? Anybody? Any questions is there? Or you can uh, ask directly to her. Ma'am, one question is there. Yeah. From uh, Giri Daran. Yeah. Okay. Hello, sister. Nice information from you. I have a question. I have some interest in radial radio radio labeling, but today when I watch your lecture, you said about set labeling. Can we merge these two concepts? This is the question yeah. from yeah. Giri Daran. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, it's a good question. Actually, uh, this is. <laughs> this is a labeling which i was explaining can be generalized uh, 
by using radio labeling also because radio labeling of course is has something to do with the distance here we define dcsl labeling as a uh, you can have a look at k uniform dcsl graphs there that k you can take it as the distance between the radio labeling uh, i think you can generalize radio labeling to set labeling okay next question from vijayalakshmi there is any basic books for labeling i'm sorry no no basic books but you get plenty of uh, papers if you just google uh, what i uh, what i recommend to you is you just download galian survey which he update every year so you just type in google galian survey on labeling you will get all those uh, defined terms and all those existing result and all those open problems so whichever you feel interested uh, one particular type of labeling of course set labeling he is not giving i suppose or number labeling you will get there set labeling my paper is there a survey where where i have put all the concepts in uh that that also you can google and you will get it there are two three labeling books uh one is uh, gdldsa that is one of the group discussion that is being held in manandawadi that book is available then labeling and uh that uh, that is edited by professor rao uh sb rao and one more person those two books are there but they are some uh, something like not a textbook but it is uh, some um, what to say it is some compiled volume of some group discussion and all. other than that i am not aware of any labeling books and myself and sudev have published the graph labeling that is explicitly on some set labeling one book is published that is the only three books as far as i know yeah uh, uh, are you satisfied with my answer okay ma'am then next question from priya what are all the applications of cardiac labeling oh that uh, that i have already mentioned so actually cardiac labeling uh, uh, means what we are giving uh, edge values and all uh, for almost all cardiac almost all labeling cardiac labeling can be applied almost all applications of labeling in Uh, image processing in a uh, body labeling actually people studied because of its application but now people uh, is bit upset because uh, given a network uh, can you say whether it is a cordial network is np complete its computation time is np complete otherwise cordial graph cordial graphs is having can be applied whichever you feel label graphs are applicable that much importance is there for cordial graphs in other words all the applications what i have mentioned here is applicable to cordial graphs Okay, ma'am. One more question from Priya. Can we merge this Tina graph with harmonious labeling? Yeah, actually, cordial labeling is a weaker version of graceful and harmonious. Yeah, uh, people are studying uh, with cordial labeling. Also, you see here we take the absolute difference instead of that. Uh, people are studying when you take addition modulo some classes and all yeah you can study that also no problem 
additional modulo 2 is being already studied. The, they are all can be considered as variation of cordial labeling. Yeah, you can think of such things also, definitely. Okay, next question from Ganeshekar M. Can we apply labeling in distance graph, geodic number and stinner number? I didn't get you. Can you repeat, please? Can we apply labeling in distance graph like geodic number and stinner number? Oh, definitely. It is being already applied. People have studied it. You just type it and one of my students itself has a thesis on that. It's very much studied. You can definitely think of that. You can just type what all things, what all terms you said in Google. You will see many papers also on that. Definitely. That's what I told you in the beginning. Labeling is a, has become a very vast area. People define different, different kinds, different, different versions of labeling every day. And of course, uh, it is important because of its application, but somehow uh, people misuse it also in the sense that uh, um, take a class of graph and then define a new labeling and see whether it exists there and all. Very small classes of graphs we look at and uh, define new thing, but uh, okay, it is okay, but uh, given a network, uh, can you assign this labeling? That should be the approach that we take to that, that's all. The first thing is existence of network. Then to study the network, we should use the labeling. That should be the attitude. Okay, ma'am, one more question from Dr. Anuj Kumar. Yeah. How we can use labeling in X-ray crystallography? Tell us about the progress. Uh, I am not much aware of it because I am not a, I'm not from medical field. I think I have explain, explained to you uh, something like. Um, I will tell a little more about it if you want. It is actually connected with the refraction information. Uh, see, this problem, how it is mathematically important is, it is equivalent to determine all labeling of the appropriate graphs, which produces a pre-specified set of edge levels. That is, X-rays have some, um, uh, some, some, uh, some, some, what to say, some crystal-like structure. That structure, if you can convert it into a network, it can be arranged. That is what I understand from that. It is, a, it is actually a uh, characterization of the structural properties of crystalline solids. I don't know much about it. And uh, once I went to a lab and they were explaining and asking us, uh, giving us, using some software, they have converted it into a software and asking us to uh, specifically say how this network can be, um, uh, what to say, can be, can be uh, re restructured in such a way that there is no overlapping of edges or to a particular distance, there should not be any overlapping of edges between. So only that much I know. I'm sorry, I cannot explain more than that. Okay, ma'am, one more question from yeah. Dr. Ma Maria Dos. In network models, is it possible to find the efficiency of communications with the least interference? 
Sure. That is what actually this radio labeling uh, do. Because uh, in, in, they're all, uh, or of course, this DCSL labeling also. That is, we are uh, fix a frequency and then uh, broadcasting it in between. What is the distance between? The, uh, for this distance, what should be the frequency? Something like that. So interference occurs because cross uh, crossing of frequencies happens. So this can be reduced using these labeling problems. That is one of the major application of DCSL labeling. Uh, yeah, it can be done, yes. Uh, sister, our participants is asking whether you are able to share the PPT or not. Oh, sure. No problem. Okay. Then uh, we think it's our time to wind up. Yeah. So, uh, sh shall we wind up now, ma'am? Yeah, okay. No problem. Oh, okay. Any more, any more question? Or it's was okay. it available for the uh, participants? Participants, uh, any more questions is the I think we have covered all of our questions. You just type in the chat box. Yeah, okay. Okay, then thank you all. It was nice time. Okay. Uh, okay, I would like to request you to fill the feedback form that are available in the chat box. It will be available uh, only for 30 minutes after the session and it will be considered as your attendance sheet. Okay, then one more question uh, is the man. Yeah. Which one? Okay, ma'am, the question is from Sinu Moore. Mm -hmm. uh, current research scope of centrality measures in graph theory. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is a very vast area, Sinu. If you are interested, you can just mail to my email ID. I will give you my paper itself. To say that we have to go to another... Uh, theory which is signed graphs uh, yeah i think you know i will uh, i i can i can mail you my paper there's a paper on that in two three minutes we cannot explain what it is actually this organizers can give her my email id i will definitely answer her yeah okay ma'am then one more question is there. Okay, from Sri Devi S. Yes. Can we use labeling for path partition of a tree? Actually, in a path partition of a tree, why why should you do that? Why should you do path partition of a tree? There are many methods. Uh, there are many algorithms to uh, to have the spanning tree and to find the max uh, geodesic paths, different different paths and all. We don't need labeling at all to do that. I don't know whether I understood your question correctly. Uh, if I am correct, there is no need for that. Okay, man, then one more question. 
can we apply labeling in a algebra graph theory from mega pm oh yes definitely there are studies like that very much studies see you have seen how we are introducing groups when we when we were discussing about k equitable graphs v4 graphs they are all all they are all uh, abelian groups there are very many studies multiplicative uh, proofs has been taken and then given the labeling there are papers like that they already exist all these things already exist and that is what i told you that the labeling is has become a very vast area and uh, our team itself has four or five papers on uh, algebraic labeling break labeling is nothing but you take a group or a field and then give the vertex labeling and study how it is affected in the structure of the graph or how nicely you can evaluate the structure of the given network using this group or field or ring the such studies are already being studied if you are interested you can yeah it is a good question actually but it is a very uh, vast question to answer in one sentence or two sentence it is there are studies like that yes topology is attached to that and i just told you about uh, uh, topologically graphs but given a network can you give a uh, topology on that that is what we have seen what is the structure of that graph the conversely that study also has been studied given a topology what are those graphs which accept this topology in their structure they are called topogenic graphs such studies are also being graphs you must be knowing one textbook itself is there top topological graph theory also as you have asked whether algebra has something to do there is a textbook even algebraic graph theory there also this method of labeling is being well explained a very small textbook algebraic graph theory it is in in shops nowadays i think indian edition has come out anything more ma uh hello yes okay shall we wind up ma yeah yeah for sure okay thank you ma'am thank you very much for your uh, full support yes. and on behalf of universal engineering college i would like to express our profound gratitude to the presenter of our first day ftp sister dr k a germina thank you ma'am thanks a lot we greatly appreciate the presentation you gave to us it's nothing short of incredibly informative and interesting thank you ma'am thank you very much and also i express my sincere gratitude to our respected principal dr jos kitchen sir for your full support and coordination and also i am glad to express our sincere thanks to our hod dr k k narayan sir for your great coordination support and caring and finally i express vote of thanks to all the members and the participants who make this ftp program a grand one then one thing i want to be uh, noted to that i would like to request you all to fill the feedback form that we have sent in your chat box and i would like to remind that it will be available in 30 minutes after this session make it fast and it will be considered as your attendance sheets then i would like to remind about tomorrow's ftp on the topic uh, combinatorics by dr lisa matthew thanks again for joining us today stay safe stay healthy bye thank you ma'am